Vietnam has no interest in uh, confronting with China. Uh, she had uh, some experience of this confrontation, and because uh, uh, of the Doi Moi and the 35 years of economic growth, uh, 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 confrontation with China was destroyed all this policy. So uh, we uh, can um, uh, conclude that Vietnam has absolutely uh, no interest and will do all what she can to, uh, uh, to uh, continue his cooperation with China. And uh, ASEAN is very important for uh, Vietnam to uh, uh, succeed in uh, um, keeping the balance between China and the US. Sorry for, uh, the, for uh, this uh, too long paper. Thank you. You, you are the organizer, you have plenty of rights, but I was, uh, I was a mission to, uh, to, to make it respect by yourself. Sorry. So <laughs> no, you're right. It's, perfect. it's just perfect, but I wanted to have time for Q&A. And I have received quite a bit of questions. And I want to start with three questions, actually, because uh, we, we still have a little bit more than 10 minutes. So three questions is interesting, um, as uh, is, it must match with the remaining time. The first one is addressed by Ekaterina Kol Kolundova um, of the ASEAN Center of Moscow. Uh, Moscow, and she asked, uh, I think the question is, I'm sure, the question is for, is for Professor Dewey for Tuna Anwar. Uh, what international regional instruments does Indonesia have to push forward its inclusive approach to regionalism? Dewey, what do you think? What is the capacity of Indonesia to make it happen? Uh, she appears to have left the room. I'm trying to get her to come back. Okay. We can, we can continue with the uh, next question. Next question. So the next question will be addressed to Professor uh, Lao Soumier by David Cabrou from, uh, from Paris, from Sciences Po, uh, from the Seri. In what way can Confucian notion of harmony be reconciled with Marxist-Leninist notion of conflict as the basis of social interactions in, in relation to the uh, communist, uh, Chinese Communist Party and its neighbors. Because... Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I had one question on the chat from the same uh, gentleman a while ago, and I have replied in my text uh, to the gentleman. Uh, uh, my answer is that, uh, in fact, I think I, I don't have the answer uh, to the questions and neither, neither the Chinese CCP or the CCP themselves uh, also do not have the answer. The reason I say that, uh, because many of us see Chinese Communist Party as a political entity, but because I'm a Chinese, and I studied Chinese history, thousand years of history, and I know quite a lot of Chinese history. And in my opinion, Chinese Communist Party is not a political entity. Instead, it is an extension of dynasty. So the chairman or the general secretary of CCP is actually an emperor. All right? The succession of the emperor in China Communist Party these days is the battle between uh, Chinese uh, Communist Party youth wing and Chinese Communist Party, the, oh, 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 the, 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 the original generations, you know, the princelings. So this dichotomy is exactly the same as the power struggle within, with insight the palace of an empire. So who will succeed an emperor in the Chinese way? There is two, there are two lines. One is a direct bloodline that inherited from the emperor, all right? But that direct bloodline was not guaranteed. It has to be the empress, the empress son, all right? 
And when the emperor's son is being assigned as a crown prince, then there will be a lot of political infighting, especially with all the inner circles inside the, uh, the palace. So what happened is there are there were always a different line that will take over the original line. And that different line will again create a continuous dichotomy of the succession traits of every dynasty in China. And therefore, in, in the case of CCP, so it's the battle between Chinese Communist Party's youth wing and those, and, uh, those descendants of the first generation of CCP founders. And Xi Jinping happens to be the descendant of the founding fathers. And so he has declared himself constitutionally as the president of life. So we'll see whether he survive until 2049, which is 100 years of People's Republic of China. And probably he will, because Deng Xiaoping died at the age of 94. And by the time he reached 2049, if my estimation is correct, he will be around 96 or 97 years old. So, so, so the real answer to that, there is no answer. And, and interactiveness with neighboring country is again the Chinese way of, as I said in my paper, to tributary system where you respect their, uh, their culture, their language, their history, their ability, and they will reciprocate the kindness on the basis of harmony. And that is the way that we can work together with China. And that is why in my paper, I contend very strongly that ASEAN can play a very important role in that regard. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Professor. It's, it's amazing because the, um, the perception we had in the introduction, I don't know if you have all read the booklet of the program, mm. but um, the idea that Donald Trump has been replaced by Joe Biden, that, that it mm. will change everything from scratch. Uh, let's say that it will be a, a, a totally 100% of the policy. And what you do explain about China is that it's always the same for 1,000 years. And yeah. it makes us thinking about a, a bit of difference of approach. And I think it's really, really um, a, a lesson for all of yes. us. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may add one sentence, in my, in my own calculation, for 4,000 years of history, the dynasty average period is about 220 years, average years. So CCP, if my allegation that it's a dynasty, then it will survive for 220 years. And now it's just only 100 years. It will survive for another 120 years. We will be not there to- uh, Yeah, to, we will not be there. If you are, if you are right or not. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, <laughs> Professor. Uh, I yes. see that Professor uh, yeah. De Anwar is, is back on yes. track. Thank you. Thank you. I, lost, I lost connection for a while, so could you, yeah. could you repeat? Could you repeat the question? Yeah, again? I will. I will repeat the questions. The, Christ, the questions coming from Ekaterina Koldunova, and she's from the ASEAN Center of Moscow, and she asks, "What international regional instruments do Indonesia have? Does Indonesia have to push forward its inclusive approach to regionalism?" Yeah, uh, of course. You know, the, we already have it. It's ASEAN. Uh, the, the ASEAN with its uh, Code of Conduct, Treaty of Amity and Cooperation in Southeast Asia. It has opened it to accession uh, to dialogue partners, including to Russia. And uh, it is, you know, the, reg the primary regional convener uh, that, that tries to include, uh, you know, the for membership for uh, the East Asia Summit, of course, is much more exclusive. You have to be a dialogue partners of ASEAN. You have to have significant uh, economic uh, relations with ASEAN countries. Uh, and you have to have to, uh, ratified uh, the, uh, the, the Treaty of Amity and uh, Cooperation. Uh, that's why it took quite a while for Russia, for example, uh, to be admitted in. Uh, but the, the, um, you know, the Professor Lau was talking about ASEAN's diversity and, uh, uh, and our habits of unity and diversity. Uh, this is probably we can, uh, for those of who are experts on culture and so on, you know, uh, our, our view of the world is not binary. It's not necessarily, you know, evil empire versus good empires, but uh, uh, the ability uh, to 
uh, mix and match uh, what the wayangs, you know, the, uh, the pup, shadow puppets, the complexity of the characters. You know, there is no truly good guy. There's no truly bad guys either. And, and the most important thing is to be able to work together. But, um, uh, but even including here, I would like to take issue, for example, with Professor Lau about the Chinese worldview, which is unchanged, basically. Uh, and it looks at, still looks at itself as a middle kingdom and, and relations with, with the Nanyang, with the Southeast Asian countries on unequal relations. It's the, 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 you know, the, uh, the son of heavens, heavens reading, dealing with uh, tributary systems. Uh, of, I think the situation has changed, you know, with the, with the West Valley and states. We are, Southeast Asian countries, ASEAN countries are extremely jealous of its sovereignty and territorial integrity and also uh, you know, every small country is equal to the big countries within ASEAN. Uh, Indonesia, uh, although people call it as a natural leader of ASEAN, it doesn't assert itself as a leader of ASEAN, you know, uh, because it uh, deliberately adopts a low profile foreign policy uh, and, and accepts the, uh, you know, the decision making by consensus. Unlike in Eastern Europe, where you have weighted membership, we don't have weighted membership, you know, uh, every, every vote uh, is like in the UN, it's more or less equal. And, and maybe just uh, this is uh, an anecdote um, from uh, an envoy from the Yuan dynasty went to the Singosari kingdom. I don't know, Stefan, whether you know this story, uh, asking for tribute from the king of Singo Singosari and, that, and the king uh, cut off the ears of that, uh, of that uh, envoy. So uh, for us in Indonesia, uh, relations with China will have to be based on equality. Uh, there, are, there are, you know, uh, clearly different powers have uh, different ability, uh, but that's why, uh, you know, uh, ASEAN uh, is formed uh, to increase the, uh, the, the bargaining power of, of the countries, including, you know, uh, all the smaller countries are now able to sit uh, at, at the table. Individual countries within Southeast Asia may have different relations with China, uh, but collectively we, we think that, you know, they should, we should have more, uh, more autonomy. And I think that is, you know, that strategic autonomy is very, very important. And that's why um, we will not accept uh, a Pax Sinica any more than we can accept a Pax Americana. At least that is from Jakarta perspective. JB, thank, thank you. Thank you. I mean, I'm glad to, uh, to have reconnected with you again after the lapse of so many years. You know, Raja, Sook, Abdav, we, yeah, we, when, when all, we... You know, we, we miss you so much. <laughs> you know, the ADS fellowship, you know, things like that. But, you know, let, let, let me get, it, get, get it to your point, you know. Uh, the thing is, we Southeast Asians, just like Chinese, Chinese people, huh? we are all in the family. So within the members of the family, we quarrel, we fight, we enjoy, we laugh. All right. When we eat dinner, we are sitting in a round table and who will sit on the chair, the head of the table, we decide whenever the dinner comes. Right, and in the dinner, you know, we argue and then we enjoy, and then okay, we come again. So that is the spirit I think ASEAN and China can work, you know, uh, closely, uh, constructively, even though we will argue and, and, and fight among each other, but that's fine, that's fine. But no one will be there to say, I am the boss, you must listen to me, and that is not the way that the Chinese will want to, and neither Southeast Asia want to do that. All right, but probably we, we, we should. Uh, reinitiate what we have done before. Yeah, thank I you. Will play, I will play the same role by uh, disrupting a little bit because it was shadow puppeting. Uh, so it's very interesting tributary versus uh, equality that uh, will still remain a debate for long. And I will have my last question. It's not mine, as a matter of fact, and it's addressed by two professor. Joffe Santarita, and it's always the same. Uh, the question is what would operational is? It's from Dr. Telly Lee, who will be the next uh, chair of the same session, of the third session. And her question is what would operationalizing, institutionalizing the ASEAN outlook on the Indo Pacific and the Indo Pacific entail? What does it mean exactly? Okay, uh, briefly, I, I can say that the uh, AOIP uh, is still a document. It's a vision that uh, remains to be uh, paper and has to be operationalized. I think it, it is very good that we need to operationalize this because the counterpart based on my another paper 
the AYP has its own counterpart with India, and that is the Indo-Pacific Oceans Initiative. And there are three or four major elements that are present between the two visions or outlook. And that would include uh, maritime cooperation and connectivity, sustainable development, and of course, economy. And to answer that, what would entail? These are the spaces for possible cooperation. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. I, I still have plenty of questions because it's more than a question, it's a debate. Oh, Professor Sutipan, please. Could I just uh, have some talk uh, uh, very shortly? I think this session reflect very well the kind of the diversity of uh, ASEAN, you know, whether we can achieve unity or be no Pacific in another story. Um, I almost have a question for everyone, but uh, as a share, I already have the question from the audience. I may ask uh, first, maybe uh, Professor Claire, because of the Vietnam, and, and uh, you present very well, Vietnam being courted by uh, many, particularly the, the court, the four countries that you show in the slide, which we've had, in fact, this morning, uh, we cannot also cannot follow only the quad. Uh, what, uh, and, and that's precisely the question how, and on the other side, as Sim Ji showed very well, thousand years that China have relations with, with ASEAN and how that's going to be in this Indo-Pacific. So uh, my question to you, uh, you know, as we all said, uh, we uh, cannot choose side, you know, it's ASEAN cannot choose side. Uh, whether Vietnam, decide to choose five side of Vietnam, how Vietnam like to work with other ASEAN, you know, or are working with ASEAN in the Pacific, because you not have time to respond to the last part, I guess, about Vietnam and Indo Pacific. Of course, one question maybe go back to Professor Davy. I also interest very much uh, your, your, your presentation is about you seem to promote about the idea of uh, uh, existing mechanism of ASEAN, you know, to, to do the job of the Indo-Pacific. And uh, as uh, Jose uh, mentioned as well, uh, perhaps uh, the non-aligned movement for ASEAN to take the lead. Uh, I don't know uh, whether uh, the, the panelists would like to take this kind of issue in your response. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. So I, I will uh, answer very quickly, telling that um, so the situation uh, of Vietnam in the South China Sea uh, uh, this last 10 years was really uh, very difficult. It was uh, the, the, the biggest crisis between the two countries. But at the same time, uh, China and Vietnam are also very close, probably the closest and the and, and also uh, Professor Lowe speak about family. So sometimes in the family, you can have very hard conflict uh, also. And it's a bit uh, the same for, for Vietnam, which is uh, uh, the, the closest uh, in cult cultural term and also economic and ideological term. Uh, so uh, I think that the level of, of um, of uh, uh, problem of security in the South China Sea is very high. And that's why um, uh, at the moment they secure their uh, strategy with the Quad. And in fact, Vietnam since last year is uh, uh, belongs to the Quad plus four is the only country of Southeast Asia. So that's true that Vietnam has a special place in ASEAN, but, uh, and, uh, but on the other side, I would say that uh, considering the long story of Vietnam and the fact that uh, 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 the success, his economic success is uh, uh, very important for him. And I think that he will just try to, he just try to contain uh, uh, China and uh, to uh, uh, do this so that uh, they will not have conflict because it's not the interest of China. It's not the interest of Vietnam, absolutely not. So uh, I think that the tension are very high uh, in family, you can have very high tension and sometimes uh, 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 rupture. I mean, uh, uh, so uh, it's not only harmony in the family, uh, uh, I think. Um, and I think that um, absolutely like uh, Professor Davis say, uh, um, uh, ASEAN is characterized by a great diversity, and uh, I would like to finish in comparing with with uh, with Europe. Uh, uh, ASEAN welcome communist country. 
uh, whereas ASEAN was an anti-communist uh, alliance. So um, uh, it's very impressive uh, for, uh, for me to see that uh, they are able to discuss. So uh, in a family, you can uh, still discuss. And I think that Vietnam is, uh, have a long tradition and a long experience of discussing with China. So, uh, um, so, so I think that um, it's a most important uh, lesson to, to learn, that uh, they know how to, to speak with Chinese, even if sometimes it's very difficult. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, may I, may, may I supplement uh, Claire's uh, view on China is just to, uh, to give a better view of the position Vietnam had had uh, with China. During the Qing Dynasty 200 years ago, Vietnam, the emperor of Vietnam wanted to name Vietnam Annan, but then it was refused by the emperor of Qing. And then it, the ding dong a bit, and then they come back with Nan Viet. Uh -huh. And then the emperor said, Yo, why are you so stubborn? You coming? I said, No, you come back. I said, No, this time you come. Okay, okay. What I do is, if you revert the word, and and uh, and yet uh, Nan uh, Viet, and then you change to Vietnam. Okay, I give you the, the, the permission. So that is how you know the ding dong of a family business. Uh, you, you come up, uh, father give me $10. So I said, no. And then you come back again, $5. How about $5? Then no, then you come back again, $6. Ah, yeah, okay, la, I give you $7. That is the way the, the family business happened when we deal with China. Yes, I mean, but, yeah. yes but, but in uh, uh, the history of the family, there was a uh, war. And uh, uh, so uh, it's not always harmony. And you, uh, Vietnam has a long experience of war. I think that among all the countries in Southeast Asia, Vietnam has the longest experience of conflict, but also cooperation, both. But uh, so uh, he, he know how to manage uh, that. And in certain situations, he, he, he succeed in telling no. <laughs> so it's, it's probably time to conclude. Very sorry for that, because it has been very, very interesting. I see a bit of difference in between the notion of brotherhood that is more or less presented by ASEAN and so uh, yeah, and the relation that is more vertical in between fathers and children that is presented from the Chinese point per prospect. So that's it, that's reconciliation of the notions of intergenerational or well-balanced will be the debate for the next couple of years, decades, centuries. But I Stephen, really do, do I need agree. to jump in a bit about this, uh, the last question, uh, very briefly? Very, very, very briefly. We are out of time. I don't want to be blamed by the organizer, even if they are in the debate. <laughs> no, but I think that it just we pointed out that uh, the it is called the ASEAN outlook on Indo-Pacific. It's not the ASEAN policy on Indo-Pacific. It is not the ASEAN strategy on Indo-Pacific. I think that's very careful. It's an outlook. It's a worldview. So that you know, the ASEAN worldview on Indo-Pacific is that we work through existing architectures and 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 you know building blocks. So, uh, so we not don't do not think of it as an overarching rigid institution, uh, and, and 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 I think that is you know this is an, uh, to be discussed further. Thank you. Thank there you there very much. It's it, it just like you know. No, that's the over. Block. Block. I had a reminder. <laughs> <laughs> I had a reminder from the organizer, and I don't want to be blamed forever. So, so no, we have to close the sessions, even if the debate has to be very vivid. But I know that you are a community. You will, you will definitely continue it, and I uh, hope to be part of it as well. So thanks a lot. Thanks very much to the panelists. Thank you very much for all the participants. You are numerous, hundreds. If uh, I assume that uh, there is this uh, seminar online plus uh, the uh, Facebook. So it's a very successful conference indeed. And we will now in a three minutes, a three minutes break, maybe is allowed and then move to the, third, to the second part of the third session. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. <laughs> I didn't sleep at all. <laughs>